Hi and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around we'll be checking out a Banggood product that they sent me to review. Most of the Banggood products that I've reviewed I purchased on my own, but this one they sent me to review. They reached out again and asked me if I was interested to pick some products that I'd like to review. Uh, so this is one. It is a 0 to 30 volt uh, 5 amp adjustable DC regulated power supply. Um, the list price uh, that they're selling was $78.88. You can get it from a U.S. warehouse for $50 something dollars. Uh, last I looked, uh, that tends to vary depending on availability, but uh, um, we'll, we'll check it out. It has current uh, limiting capabilities, uh, metering, and we'll check out and see how well it regulates, how accurate the meters are. Not that I expect them to be extremely accurate, they're usually just there for reference. Uh, packaging wise, uh, uh, they did better than usual. It took a beating in its the international trip. This came from the Chinese warehouse. Um, we'll see how uh, well it survived inside. They make a 220 and a 110 version of this product. So opening it up, oh, they have really nice foam uh, protection on the inside. So uh, I expect good things. There is a very short and simple manual. And uh, let's pop this guy out of here and take a look. So first look, case is plastic, it dips in on the top, not anything major. The button is sloppy but positive. Um, they have a safety ground which is your supply ground uh, at the AC outlet if you have that hooked up and they connect that by default which you can separate to your uh, output ground, it's a switching supply. Um, the case is either warped or the feet aren't the same height. I think it's warped and maybe through shipping uh, so it rocks. So you turn the power on and you have a very loud fan. Um, interesting on the adjustments is that the knobs are sequential so there's a coarse and a fine. You can see that here. And you can't reach the max. If the fine is turned all the way down you turn the coarse all the way up you can't actually reach the maximum voltage without turning both of them all the way up, which actually goes a little over 30 volts, which is very interesting. It's fairly accurate. It's off by on the order of millivolts uh, in general uh, between the displays. So if I go down and 24.1, 24.2, so that's 100 millivolts there at the lower, and see it's sort of in between. So pretty darn good in general. That's 24.25, 24.2 unknown. So reasonably good accuracy there. Uh, the current limiting and the voltage are both sequential knobs. So also if you have the fine all the way up and you go to zero with the course, um, you can't get to zero. <laughs> and zero is actually about 15 millivolts out. It's kind of interesting as well. Uh, let's take a look at current limiting. I've set this up with my ammeter and my fluke in series with the power supply and it's going connected to a uh, 5 ohm 300 watt resistor. So as we turn the voltage up, I wanted to see how accurate the meter was. And again, within, within uh, 0.01 in general, um, so when you're in current limit mode, the output voltage will go high enough until you reach whatever current limit you have set. And again, um, you can't go to zero without both knobs being all the way down. You can't reach the max without both knobs being all the way up. Um, so if you turn your current limit to zero and you turn your voltage all the way up, which with this load you'll exceed the capabilities of the power supply, so I won't be able to get all the way to 30 volts with a 5 ohm load, but as you bring it up, so it says 6 volts is 1 amp, so that's sort of implying it's about 6 ohms. Um, uh, this resistor is not a hyper accurate resistor, so that's not a problem. Um, current reading on the meter is pretty darn accurate. Here's the negative though. So you hear the fan in back, and as I reach max, do you hear the fan slowing down? because it's apparently being driven by the same output of the power supply. So there's 5 amps, and uh, there, if I go over 5 amps, you hear the fan really slow down. Now this was rated at 5 amps, so I get that, but they probably should have prevented it from going anything even over that. 
because it actually slows the fan down when you want the fan to be operating at its highest speed. So that's not so great. One more useful test. It's set at 3 volts and it's reading 3.011 on the fluke. And here is a load coming on and it drops about 2 millivolts. So the regulation is pretty decent. Let's see what it does at higher current loads. So let's raise the voltage. I've got my current limiting off. So there's 12.097, 2.5 amps, and there it dropped like 9 millivolts. Didn't come back to the same voltage exactly either, that's a little interesting. So it tends to drift a bit as well. The pots are 12.180, so there's about 18 millivolts drop with a 2.5 amp load. And it tends to come back and overshoot a little bit. So, not the world's greatest regulation or quickest regulation, but it does work. And it tends to drift uh, voltage as you uh, pull a load off and on. That's kind of interesting. I've never seen that before. Let's try a little bit higher loads. So, here's 19 volts, 19.177. And there's a 4 amp load almost. Dropped about 28 millivolts, 29 millivolts, <laughs> 30 millivolts. And doesn't really come back to where it was either, exactly. That's kind of interesting. So if you've got a dynamic load, it seems like it'll bounce a bit. That could be a problem. It's not huge, but if you need critical uh, voltage regulation, this is not the power supply for you. All right, so we looked at the oscilloscope uh, noise output of this uh, power supply, and that was 500 megahertz bandwidth, full bandwidth, not uh, low-pass filtered, and it was peak-to-peak -peak noise, uh, something like 80 millivolts. And uh, the RMS that is specced in the in the data sheet that comes with it for what it is. Uh, measures shows that it's going to be less than one millivolt RMS. Uh, RMS is about 0 0.707 for a sine wave. Uh, so uh, the scope at 80 millivolts RMS of that at peak to peak would be around 50 millivolts. So if we look at this guy under load, no, so anyways, I'm going to show you another way to measure it. You could just take your meter, which is very bandwidth limited. The fluke, I think it's around 100 kilohertz, something like that. Don't remember the spec, but it's something pretty low and put it on AC and just measure it. So right now we're getting about 1.7 millivolts without any load on it. And as we go cranking the load up to full load around five volts, when you hear the fan slow down, now we're coming back down again. So at uh, severely, severely bandwidth limited, uh, we're around two and a half millivolts, so that's actually pretty darn good. So perhaps what they meant, that's what they meant here. They certainly were almost certainly looking for a uh, more optimistic spec. Uh, there probably is even a standard for it. I don't know what it is. I'm not a power supply designer. Uh, so... Uh, that may even fall within how you rate the spec, but that's not bad actually under full load only a few millivolts of ripple um, Let's see what happens if I crank it all the way up Where we go over five and the fan really slows down and We're at 60 millivolts, so that's what we're looking at in the scope the 50 so there's about what we saw in the scope and uh, the reason that <laughs> It just shut itself off. It went into power safe, protect mode. <laughs> Overheated. I was kind of curious about that because running a power supply where your fan slows down when you get to the highest current uh, is the exact opposite of what you want. And my guess is on the design is that they have, it's a dual output supply and you're just saturating some point, uh, some part of the supply when you draw over 5 amps out of this and it causes both outputs to drop voltage wise <laughs> which makes the fan slow down as well as the voltage dip on this side
Oh, and it doesn't want to turn on. We'll have to see if it turns on after it cools off. So, while this guy is uh, waiting to cool down, why don't we pop open the hood and see what we've got inside. I'm kind of curious. So let's pop the hood here and see what's inside. Wow, now I didn't figure that. I figured this would be a switching supply for sure because it wasn't very heavy. But uh, you got a total transformer inside here, which makes me hope that... Uh, this guy didn't give up the ghost without because not because of thermal protection shut it off, but because something else catastrophic failed. There is a uh, power transistor here in the back, most likely, or maybe a regulator IC uh, that's directly fan cooled, and uh, I looked a little further, and actually it's the fuse that blew. So under under load, uh, they don't have any protection circuitry that either works or is present. But it seems to be a linear power supply. Um, that was definitely a surprise. And so the reason the fan's slowing down is you're drawing enough current that you're causing the transformer to saturate. And once it saturates, the output voltage drops because it can't provide any more... Uh, magnetic coupling between the primary and the secondary so the voltage drops because you're pulling so much current out. Uh, what you would need is a bigger transformer that uh, allows more couplings <clears throat> and then you can supply more current. That's uh, interesting. <clears throat> so that's a major design flaw. Um, without really digging into this, this thing wasn't designed to be serviced. I'm a little surprised at a linear supply because it takes a lot more components. Uh, they have meter microprocessor components built in the motors, two of them. And uh, perhaps just this module is the supply. That's very interesting. So I popped this guy open a little further. And uh, this is just a transistor back here. It's a 2SC uh, transistor. So they're just using that to handle the current. And uh, they make their own linear regulator. I have discrete parts here. There is an LM7815 here, which is a 15 volt positive regulator. And that's probably to power the fan and, and this LM324 quad op amp single power supply. Single supply. A lot of op amps want dual supply so they can you know, be bipolar. Um, the 324 pulls it off with a single supply. So that's how they do the current limiting and the regulating. They do it all discreetly, which is good on them. That makes for the low no noise supply that it, uh, it can be at the lower currents. Um, anyways, uh, I would have liked to see some more uh, safety protection there. I'm surprised the fuse blew. Maybe it's just a, a cheesy fuse because the fuse went in favor of thermal protection circuitry. Um, I think it would have been nice if they had limited in this circuitry here. They do have some trim adjust, but they're for calibration. Um, it would have been nice if they'd limited the output current to 5 amps even, so that the fan speed didn't drop so much, because as soon as you go over 5, the fan speed drops extremely quickly. And that's exactly the opposite of what you want, so that's not good for anybody, it's not good for them, and certainly not good for the user. So, uh, uh, let me pop this guy back together, and I don't think I have any fuses here at home. At work I would have, but uh, um, I don't know if I have this size. I'll go check. Let me put it back together and I'll bring you back. So here's my final take on this guy. I replaced the fuse with a slightly larger one. I didn't have the 2 amp fuse it came with. So I had a little 3 amp fuse, so I put that in. Um, it seems like that is its protection circuitry, or maybe I just got a infant mortality bad fuse uh, at the lower voltage. That's entirely possible, and that may not be anyone's fault, because that sort of thing happens. Um, overall, the power supply is very plasticky. Uh, as a matter of fact, just transporting home looks like just bouncing around a little bit of broke, or maybe it arrived that way, I'm not sure. The box was relatively beaten up. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't sit flat, so it did get tweaked somehow, and the case is fairly flexible. Um, the meters are good. They're fairly accurate. Uh, and it's nice to have both a current and a voltage meter, especially when you're doing cu current limiting. I guess you kind of need it, rather than just detents on a knob or something like that. I'm not a big fan of the sequential knobs where the course won't reach the maximum voltage without the fine also being turned all the way up. 
usually the course would, uh, to, to my taste, would be able to go the entire range and the fine would just allow it to go plus or minus a little bit within that range. And to me that makes more sense, but for these guys maybe not. I like the fact that they have an earth ground on front and that it's tied to the uh, basic ground as is the earth ground in the back of the case. And you can disconnect that if you want so that the power supply is floating. That's also very useful uh, at times. Uh, it doesn't look like this power supply has any protection circuitry in it. I didn't see any uh, uh, components that were thermal sensing. So that's not great. Uh, it seems like the failure mode of this power supply would be is run it at full current, the fan slows down, the output transistor overheats or something up here overheats and it burns up and it dies. Um, it's really inexpensive to relative to name brand power supplies uh, in this market. Uh, <clears throat> the second tier power supplies are probably in the couple hundred range and the premier ones like in Hewlett Packard slash Agilent slash Keyence slash whatever their name is this month uh, company, theirs would probably be close to a thousand dollars for the same thing. Um, theirs might be programmable, this one's not, um, but they would certainly be able to handle all day long uh, maximum current without overheating and failing as long as you're not running it in a really hot environment or something like that. So this guy, you run this in a hot environment, this thing's going to kill itself. Uh, all evidence uh, goes that direction. Uh, the transformer should have been made a little bit larger so that uh, it didn't saturate or derate your supply. But I guess I looked on Banggood and, and there are a whole bunch of 0 to 30 volt 5 amp supplies so everyone's trying for the same market. Um, the fact that it's a linear supply rather than a switching supply lets them meet that low noise uh, output and uh, it, uh, it doesn't regulate great, it's really slow so they're, uh, th there's a lot of delay between when the load changes and when the power supply tries to compensate. Also it doesn't seem to come back to the same voltage uh, noticeably when you, when you crank the load up off and on which I thought was really kind of weird. Uh, bottom line is, for 50 bucks uh, from the U.S. stores, or 70 some bucks, or 80 bucks, I guess, from China, uh, it's not a not a terrible deal. But there might be better ones out there. But you might have the same problem if you go for an inexpensive supply, no matter who you get it from. Um, it's hard to say. I'll have to review more of these to find out for sure. Um, so I'm not going to give any enthusiastic. Uh, uh, support for this power supply but if you need one in a pinch and you don't want to run it at maximum current if you're looking at like four amps or three amps you're probably okay uh, if you want to run it at five amps and you want to do it for any period of time this is probably not the power supply for you even though it claims it can thanks for watching hope you find it useful hope to see you next time